There currently are not a lot of stocks that I have been finding attractive in the US markets, and I have found that I have been buying more international stocks lately, especially in the Canadian market. However, after doing some digging and looking at all the valuations within my own portfolio, I have found five stocks that do look quite interesting at their current prices. So in today's video, I want to share these five stocks and explain why they are looking interesting to me. Before we get into the video though, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has left a review on my book, The Fundamentals of Investing. There are more and more incredible reviews continuing to come in, and I cannot thank you all enough for supporting my work, and I am just thrilled that so many of you enjoyed the book so much. If you have not checked out my book yet, then make sure to head over to Amazon and read the reviews for yourself. It is truly my best piece of work, and I think that you'll really enjoy it too. But with that being said, let's hop into the five stocks that are looking interesting for the month of April. All right, so the first stock we're going to talk about is a brand new one to the channel, and this one is Milai or Mercado Libre. Now, I have some screenshots here from their most recent investor presentation, and this says, we are the leading e-commerce platform in the region, which is South America or the LATAM region. So Milai is the number one leading e-commerce platform down in South America. Now, the way that I like to think about Milai is it really is the Amazon of South America. And as we continue on in this video, you're going to see that their business model is almost identical to what Amazon has been building out. So here, once again, they say that they are the largest e-commerce platform in LATAM and their gross merchandise value has compounded at 28% annually since 2016. And they did $45 billion of gross merchandise volume in the year of 2023. So there is billions of dollars of merchandise moving around on this platform now. Then Milai says they are the fastest and most extensive delivery network with 1.4 billion items shipped in 2023 alone, which is also up roughly 20% year over year. 76% of these items were also delivered within 48 hours, which is basically two day shipping. Now, again, this is very similar to Amazon because Amazon wants one day shipping or same day shipping basically throughout their entire network. And it looks like Milai is trying to do the same thing right now with two day shipping. And this will probably get better over time as well. This next slide shows that there was 85 million unique buyers in 2023, which was up 11 million year over year or about 15%. So there are more and more people down in South America using Milai. And you can see the absolutely amazing growth of this business for yourself over the past about decade. Now, on top of being a massive e-commerce platform down in South America, they also have a massive digital ads business, again, just like Amazon. In fact, Milai is number three in market share for digital ads in South America. And their revenue in 2023 for digital advertising was 705 million, which was up roughly 80% year over year. Milai's market share is also sitting at 5% in 2023, which was up 1.5% year over year. So they are taking more of the digital advertising market in South America as well, and their revenue is growing incredibly quickly. Now, while we're on the topic of revenue, Milai's overall revenue has 10x since 2018. They did $1.4 billion of revenue in 2018, and in 2023, they did $14.5 billion of revenue. So this business is growing incredibly quickly. And the way that I like to think about Milai, again, is like an Amazon down in South America. And this is a $77 billion business today. So it kind of seems to me like this could be like getting Amazon in its earlier stages because Amazon is well over a trillion dollars now. But Milai is still in that phase where they've literally 10 x revenue over the past five years. So it's a very hyper growth business still. Now, what I also love about Milai is it is becoming profitable as well. They generated $2.1 billion of operating income in 2023 which is more than a 100% increase year over year. Additionally, their operating margin is now sitting at 14.5%, up from 9% the year prior. So it looks like Milai is focusing on generating profits now and increasing its profit margins and getting profitability. Now, if we head back over to Stock Unlock and we take a look at their cash flows as well, we can see that their operating cash flows have been exploding since 2021. And in the trailing 12 months, it's now sitting at $5.14 billion in operating cash flows. Now, if we scroll down, we can also see that there is low stock based Based compensation relative to operating profits, which you guys know that I love to see. Then we can see that their capital expenditures in the trailing 12 months was only $500 million. So the majority of this operating cash flow is actually becoming free cash flow for the business. And if we take a look here, the free cash flow in the trailing 12 months was now $4.6 billion. So this company is very profitable and it is generating billions of dollars in cash flows. Now what's interesting is it's only trading for a price to free cash flow of 16.5 today, which is a free cash flow yield of 6%. Now I don't usually see price ratios this low on businesses that have 10x their revenue over the past five years. 
So to me, this looks like a pretty dang low price ratio for such a profitable and growing business. And that is why I think that Milai could be looking interesting right now. Now, full disclosure, I have not purchased any Milai shares, but this is definitely one that I want to research more because again, it seems like the business is growing incredibly well and its price is not high today, at least on a price to free cash flow basis. I also do believe that this business does have a moat down in South America, and they also have a lot of different business segments, if you want to take a deeper look into their business, that are all growing incredibly quickly. So it seems like this business is well set up to continue growing over the long term, and I do believe that it does have a moat. And for those reasons, I decided to put Milai as number one in this video. But now let's move on to the second stock that I do believe is looking interesting for the month of April, which is Alibaba. Now, Alibaba is a stock that I have been talking about on my channel, and this one is in my own portfolios. And I did do a recent video dedicated entirely to why I believe that Alibaba is looking cheap today. So let me quickly discuss why I do believe that the stock is still cheap in April. So right away, we can see that Alibaba's price to free cash flow is only at 7.8 right now, which is basically a 13% free cash flow yield. So if Alibaba wanted to pay out 100% of its free cash flows as a dividend to its shareholders, then that dividend yield could be about 13% today, which is above the historical returns of the S&P 500. So I do think that on that basis alone, this business is looking arguably cheap. However, if we also take a look at Alibaba's cash position, it's sitting at about $85 billion right now. So this company literally has $85 billion of cash on its balance sheet. Now, if we add in the total market cap of this business today, it is sitting at about $182 billion today, which means that if we subtract the cash position from Alibaba's market cap, then it's basically trading for $100 billion today. Or in other words, its enterprise value is around $100 billion. Now, if we take a look at the enterprise value to free cash flow metric, which does factor in the total cash that the business has, then we can see that Alibaba is actually trading for an enterprise value to free cash flow of only 5.2 which is a record low for the business. And if we take a look at Alibaba's free cash flow, they have generated around $23.4 billion in free cash flow in the trailing 12 months, and it is right near all time highs. Now, lastly, if we also take a look at Alibaba's revenue, we can see that it is starting to pick up again, and it is sitting at an all time high of $128 billion. So basically what I'm seeing for Alibaba is its revenue is still growing and it is at all time highs. It's also producing tens of billions of dollars in free cash flow annually, and the free cash flow is right near all time highs as well. At the same time, the business has $85 billion of cash on the balance sheet and is trading for an enterprise value to free cash flow of roughly five today. All of those things together make the argument for Alibaba looking like a very cheap stock right now, at least based on its fundamentals and its own metrics. I believe that the sentiment towards Chinese stocks is at an all-time low right now, which is represented by Chinese stocks trading for record low price ratios. However, I do believe that this is going to change at some point in the future. But I do think that at some point, this will change and the price ratios will start to expand again, just like what happened with Meta in 2022. Now, I know that Meta is a much higher quality business than Alibaba, so I'm not really trying to compare quality here. What I'm trying to say is the market was very bearish against Meta at the end of 2022, and then the business went through their year of efficiency. They got their margins back up and everything. The business is producing record cash flows now, and the stock 5x within the next 18 months. Now, I don't know if Alibaba is going to 5x in the next 18 months, but I do think that eventually the sentiment will change and that price ratio or the multiple will start expanding again at some point in the future especially if Alibaba does successfully continue growing its fundamentals. Now, on that note, Alibaba is going through its own year of efficiency. They're not calling it that, but that's basically what the business is doing. Alibaba has a brand new CEO, and he wants to cut off all of the fat, or in other words, the things that are not really core to Alibaba's business. And in fact, they have already started doing this. On March 21st, Alibaba unloaded $360 million of Billy B in its latest asset sale. So Alibaba is following through with what they're saying, and they are selling off all of their non-core investments or things that they believe are kind of just distractions to the overall business. Alibaba also raised $317 million from its sale in its stake EV maker Xpeng. So Alibaba clearly is not an EV maker business. They're not involved in electric vehicles at all. So they decided to sell off their EV investments and again use that cash to refocus on the core of the business. So in my opinion, I do believe that Alibaba is going to continue to see its profit margins expand, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that free cash flow hit all-time highs within the next year or so as the business is raising capital and reinvesting back into the profitability and core of the business. So while fundamentals are continuing to grow and the price ratios are sitting at all-time lows and the cash position is at an all-time high, 
I do believe that Alibaba is looking cheap and a very interesting stock in the market today. Now, moving on to the third stock in this video. This one is Starbucks. Now, I'm sure that we all know what Starbucks is and what the business does. And I also made a video recently on my channel explaining why I believe that Starbucks can outperform the S&P 500 going forward from its current price today. So let me kind of share my thinking here. So if we take a look at Starbucks stock price historically, we can see that back in 2019, this was a $96 stock. Now today, Starbucks is trading for $91 a share. What this means is that over the past five years, Starbucks stock has now produced negative returns, or the, the share price basically has not gone up at all. However, if we take a look at Starbucks financials here, we can see that its revenue is clearly sitting at an all-time high, and the revenue growth trend is very consistent. So the revenue growth is not slowing down, and revenue, again, is sitting at an all-time high. Now, if we take a look at Starbucks operating income, this is the exact same story. It has produced operating income of $5.8 billion in the trailing 12 months, and it is sitting at an all-time high as well. Now, very quickly, if we head over to cash flows, we can see that they've also produced $6.8 billion in the trailing 12 months of operating cash flow. So what I am seeing here is Starbucks revenue, operating income, and cash flows are all still growing and sitting at all-time highs, well, the stock has been flat over the past five years. Now, you guys know me, and I love to see a business's fundamentals continue to grow while its share price does nothing. And I do believe that is what is happening here with Starbucks, at least right now. Now, if we go and take a look at Starbucks' historical price to operating income over the past decade, we can see that its average has been about 28, and currently it is sitting at about 17.98, or basically 18. So that is well below its historical averages. Additionally, in the stock market crash of 2020, Starbucks price to operating income got down to about 17, which is only slightly below where it is currently trading today. And then in the big stock market correction of 2022, it got down to 17 once again, which again is slightly below where it is trading today of that 18. So what I am seeing here is basically outside of major stock market corrections or major stock market crashes, Starbucks stock historically has not traded for price ratios this low which also does kind of suggest to me that the stock could be looking cheap right now. Now, what's also interesting is Starbucks put out their guidance for 2024. And here we can see that they are expecting their revenue to grow between 7 and 10% this year. So in the middle of that range is 8.5%. So what I'm kind of seeing here is a business where the fundamentals are at all-time highs and continuing to grow quite well, actually, and the price ratios are at basically record lows, or lows that it doesn't see outside of stock market corrections or crashes. The share price has also done nothing for about five years now, while the fundamentals of this business have continued to grow. So if we do a quick discounted cash flow calculation using Starbucks operating income and saying that it will grow at 8% annually over the next five years, and trade at a 20 price to operating income, then we get a compounded annual growth rate of 12.42%, and a fair value today of $102 a share, basically. So this right here is why I am saying that I do think that Starbucks stock could outperform the S&P 500 going forward, and especially over the next five years. And for those reasons, Starbucks is one of the stocks that is going to make it on my interesting stocks for April 2024. All right, but moving on to the fourth stock in this video. This one is Amazon. Now, I made a video recently talking about all of the Magnificent 7 stocks and which ones I think are looking attractive and over expensive today. And Amazon was basically the only stock in that group that I did think was looking potentially undervalued or selling below fair value today. So if you want a full breakdown of the financials, then I would make sure to go and watch that video. What's also interesting, though, is Amazon is leveraging artificial intelligence in a major way. And I do not see a lot of people calling Amazon an AI company, but I do believe that they are one. For example, Amazon recently put this out. Enjoy review highlights with generative AI. Customers can quickly determine what other customers are saying about a product by taking advantage of review highlights, which are also powered by generative AI. The feature provides a short paragraph on the product detail page that highlights the product's features and the most frequently mentioned customer sentiment across written reviews. The text helps customers determine at a glance whether a product is right for them. So what this feature does is it basically takes all of the recent reviews written by customers about a product and then summarizes all of those reviews and the key points within those reviews and puts it in one nice paragraph for the customer to read and know if the product is right for them without having to read through hundreds of the most recent reviews. Now, additionally, Amazon is leveraging AI to create some pretty incredible tech. So check this out. Thanks to generative AI, customers can pay with their palm. No wallet, no problem. Amazon used generative AI to develop Amazon One, a fast and convenient contactless identity service that provides 
customers to use their palm to make payments, verify their ages, and enter locations. To train the AI model, Amazon scientists use generative AI to create millions of synthetically generated images of the palm and the subcutaneous vein structure. Amazon One delivers an accuracy rate of 99.9999%, which exceeds the accuracy of other biometric alternatives. It's even more accurate than scanning two irises. You can use Amazon One at all of the more than 500 Whole Foods market stores in the U.S. and at over 100 customer locations across the country, including Crunch Fitness, Hudson stores at airports, and multiple stadiums and entertainment venues. So using AI, Amazon has now made it so that you can pay for things, enter events, and identify yourself just by using your palm. This could potentially open up a world where we no longer need to carry identification or even credit cards. If we wanna pay for anything or verify our identification, all we need to do is scan our palms. This is like very future technology to me. And personally, I did not know that Amazon was working on anything like this or had anything like this until I started making this video and was like, hey, what is Amazon doing with AI? But I do think that this is absolutely insane. And I do love to see Amazon continuing to innovate and leverage AI. I actually think that Amazon is one of the most innovative companies in the entire world. Now, on top of Amazon leveraging AI in massive ways, we can see that its revenue is sitting at an all-time high right now and continuing to grow very nicely. Now, additionally, if we take a look at Amazon's operating cash flow, it is absolutely exploding and sitting at about $85 billion in the trailing 12 months now. And I do believe that this will continue to grow rapidly over the long term as well. Now, if we take a look at Amazon's price to operating cash flow, it is sitting at 22 today. And its historical average has been about 27.6. So it is still selling below its historical average price ratios. Now, additionally, if we zoom all the way out to about 2011 right here, we can see that historically, every time Amazon's price to operating cash flow has gotten down to about 20, the stock has bottomed. For example, here in 2015, it bottomed at 20. And then again in 2016, it bottomed at 20. So at least historically, it looks like every time Amazon gets to that price to operating cash flow of about 20, the market comes in and buys up the stock. Now again, it is trading at about 22, which is only 10% higher than its historical lows. And it is also again selling below its historical averages. So given the fact that Amazon has a massive moat and is incredibly innovative, I do believe that it will continue to grow its revenues and profits over the long term. And right now the business is trading below its historical average prices, so I do think that this stock is looking very interesting in the month of April as well. All right, now the last stock that we have to talk about in this video is BN or Brookfield Corporation. Now you guys know me, and this would not be a Daniel Pronk video without at least discussing Brookfield, right? I cover this stock a lot on my channel because it is the largest position in my portfolio. So I'm not really going to discuss anything new here because there hasn't been a lot of recent updates with this business, but I just kind of want to give you guys some perspectives on why I still think that this stock is cheap despite it being up roughly 40% over the past about six months now. So the first time that I purchased Brookfield Corporation was right around here in November of 2022 at about $38 US. I own the Canadian shares, but just for the sake of this video, we're gonna be using the US stock. So you can see that I bought this stock basically right at the high there, and then it continued to fall quite significantly by about 25% over the next about five months. Then the stock continued in this range for the next year. And during this time, I was continuing to average down on my position. And it was really in this range right here that I decided, hey, I'm gonna make Brookfield the largest position in my portfolio and leverage this dip that the stock is in to just continue buying and buying and buying as much as I can. Now, again, the stock is up roughly 42 to 43% from those lows that it had. However, when you take a look at the time that I was first buying this stock in November of 2022, it's actually only up 8% from my first time buying it. Now, when I was buying it here in November of 2022, I did think that the stock was looking cheap relative to its fundamentals. And over the past two years, Brookfield's fundamentals have only continued to grow and quite rapidly as well. So relative to the first time that I bought it when I thought it was cheap, the fundamentals, in my opinion, have continued to grow much faster than the share price. And for those reasons, I do actually still think that Brookfield is looking quite cheap today. I simply think that it was massively undervalued in this range. And that again is why I was taking so much advantage of this massive dip and that it was in. Now, additionally, Brookfield is selling for about $68.7 billion today. And if we pull out our calculator, we can enter in 68.7. Now in the trailing 12 months, Brookfield has done about $5 billion in cash flow. This means that the stock is trading for about 14 times cash flows now. However, Brookfield is projecting to grow its cash flows by 20% annually over the next five years. So when I take a look at this business, I'm seeing a 14 price to free cash flow 
with 20% annual free cash flow growth projected over the next five years. So that price ratio with that much growth is something, again, that I do not see very often in the market. And that is why I do still believe that Brookfield is quite cheap today. Brookfield also has an incredible management team that has a track record of meeting and exceeding their own guidance. So when they put out that 20% annual growth to free cash flow over the next five years, I would not be surprised to see Brookfield actually beat that target. And if they do, then again, I do still believe that the stock is looking quite cheap today. And with that being said, that is going to wrap up the video. And those are my five stocks that I do think are looking interesting for the month of April. I would love to hear what you all think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with these picks? Do you think that I am being silly? Let me know everything that you think down in the comment section. Also, if you did enjoy this video or you found it helpful in some way, then please remember to leave a like on it as I do really appreciate it and it does really help out my channel. Lastly, if you are new here and you have not subscribed to my channel, then please consider subscribing if you want to see more stock market related content like this. But that is going to wrap up the video for today, everyone. So thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it and I really hope to see you all again in my next video.